Hey, Marcus Hutzel here, and this is a bit of a different video for you in the audio realm, and I do recommend headphones for this, so you may want to pause and grab a pair. I'll wait. All right, I'm done waiting. And hopefully you'll learn something in this video because I'm gonna be talking about a slightly unorthodox way of recording audio into your mirrorless camera, like the Sony a7 IV, Panasonic GH5, Sony a7 III, et cetera, for videos like this, but it works, and it's actually a pretty good option depending on your needs and what gear you have available to you. And primarily, if you want to use XLR microphones, but you don't have XLR inputs on your camera. And perhaps if you don't want to fuss with recording audio to a separate audio recorder and syncing it in post, which let's agree is sometimes just an unwanted or sometimes unneeded step when you just want to get your video recorded and edited. So what am I talking about? Well, it's fairly simple, and that's using a USB audio interface like this Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 to allow me to plug an XLR microphone into the 2i2 or into a USB audio interface, use the gain on the USB audio interface, and then use the analog outputs on the back of the interface to feed over to my camera. So nothing groundbreaking in terms of signal flow, but not something that we all think about immediately when recording in our home studios. So I have a Shure SM58, an XLR microphone plugged into the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is then plugged into and powered from my laptop via USB, but we're then using those analog outputs on the back of the USB audio interface to feed over to my mirrorless camera's 3.5 millimeter audio input and you're hearing the audio from this signal chain right now, and it sounds pretty good if you gain structure properly. And keep a couple of things in mind when recording like this. Number one, since we're using USB audio interface, we'll be able to record directly into software as well, which I'm doing with Adobe Audition, while at the same time feeding the audio over to our camera. But honestly, I think the direct USB audio recording sounds a lot better. To me, it sounds more full and it will almost always have less noise because this signal flow does not bypass the 3.5 millimeter preamp on the camera. We're still using that preamp and you have to be careful with your settings because if you don't gain structure properly, then our audio can get really noisy like you're hearing now. And you can hear this difference quite a bit more with headphones or at least a good pair of speakers. But this is the same equipment, the same signal chain, and a reminder that if you don't remember audio basics like gain structure, you could end up with bad, noisy, hissy audio like this. There's even a small ground hum. But let's go back to some better sounding audio. And point number three, this method will almost always require you to have a computer at your disposal as well because most audio interfaces require power and data connection via USB to a computer to be able to operate and pass audio. Other small USB audio interfaces, like the Shure X2U, can actually be powered and pass audio with just a simple five volt, one amp power brick. But the Scarlett 2i2 seems to need the data connection even to be able to just use a simple microphone with it and be able to send that analog signal out of the back of the unit to something else. So keep those things in mind. So this method is a bit out of the ordinary way we normally think about recording audio with a mirrorless camera, or at the very least, it's just not the way most of us, including myself, usually think of doing things right away. And I'll go into why I've got my setup this way in just a second, but it obviously works just fine and sounds just fine as well most of the time because audio equipment can be used in any way that you can think of that's within its specifications, kind of like Legos or Tinker Toys or an Erector set. Lincoln Logs, take your pick. Just put a bunch of parts together and make something new. And I like that. I like building things and seeing them work. That's kind of the engineering part of audio engineering. So let's walk through what I've built and why I've built it to record this way for this video and talk about those pros and cons a little more of doing it this way. And remember that this information and what I'm talking about here applies to anyone out there recording audio and or video, be it a live event using broadcast cameras and camcorders or like I'm doing here with my mirrorless cameras here in my home studio because a lot of people, probably you watching this video, use these styles of mirrorless cameras to record video. I really like using hybrid cameras like this. I obviously own three of them currently, and most of us usually want to record audio into our cameras at the same time that we're recording video. This is just another method. Just remember gain structure applies to all audio equipment, no matter where or when you're trying to send audio through your equipment. Live or recording, the equipment's the same. And 
Doing it this way with a USB audio interface can provide some audio benefits in terms of what equipment you can use, but it does have a greater potential for noise in your audio if you follow bad gain structure methods. But if you want to use XLR mics and get them directly into your camera, but your camera doesn't have XLR inputs, keep watching. And throughout this video, I'll put on screen what audio you're actually listening to because I'm recording my audio several different ways at the same time using a couple of different microphones, including my Rode VideoMic NTG up there, which is going into my GH5. And since the level of this mic may change depending on what I'm demonstrating, I wanted to have options to let you hear the difference between my video mic NTG, the SM58, and different ways I'm recording this microphone. So the idea for this video actually came up because of a question I got on another video where I plugged a short SM58 directly into my Panasonic GH5 with a simple XLR to TRS adapter cable. Actually, I did it with this exact cable, and I'll link to that video below. And I recorded the audio for that entire video just that way using just a 3.5 millimeter preamp on the GH5 and a Shure SM58. And that works, at least for dynamic mics that don't need phantom power. And it works with dynamic mics because remember the 3.5 millimeter input jacks on our mirrorless cameras are mic preamps primarily. They are there to provide gain for a microphone most of the time. They can't take a balanced signal properly from an XLR mic because most of the 3.5 millimeter inputs on cameras like these are actually stereo inputs. They expect a left and a right audio signal, not a hot and cold polarity reverse signal like you would get on a balanced microphone output via XLR. Which is why I had to use this adapter cable when using my SM58 directly because I needed to unbalance the SM58 signal just before it entered the camera. That way I could give the camera a proper left and right signal. But the question that I got on that video was, does recording that way, that is recording just using an XLR microphone and that adapter cable, does recording that way directly into the camera get rid of the hiss I hear in my audio when I connect a USB audio interface to an XLR mic and camera? And I didn't quite understand what their question was or how they had their gear set up because I just didn't understand why you would use a USB audio interface and run that into your camera or how, of course, because we don't normally think about using USB audio devices directly with our cameras. They're not really meant to go straight from USB to camera, as far as I know. At some point I may have to test that, but not in this video. But that depends on the specific USB audio interface and what audio outputs that it has or doesn't have and whether it can be powered from a simple USB power brick, again, like the Shure X2U can, or again, whether it needs that data connection to a computer. So anyway, I was a little confused by the question on my video, but then I remembered I actually did the same thing, the same signal chain using a Shure X2U just in the capacity I've been talking about. I'll link to that video above, definitely down below. So. I really hadn't thought of it before either because someone else told me I could do that. So I wanted to test it, did a video on it. And since I really didn't understand why the person asked the question in this video, I thought I'd set it up. And here we are recording lots of things using an SM58 microphone going through a USB audio interface into my camera. And Bob might be your uncle. So this question from this person said that they were getting a lot of hiss or noise in their audio. So in my reply, I told them to just take a step back and figure out where exactly the hiss was coming from and to remember proper gain structure methodology to start at the sound source, the beginning of your signal chain and work your way forward through the system. And if you do that, you should be able to figure out if the hiss was coming from the mic itself because lower quality cheap mics can have a lot of self noise inherent in the mic like my cheap Lix Pro CMG50 shotgun mic that I talked about in a couple of videos. That mic has a lot of self noise that no preamp can get rid of. So the hiss might be coming from their microphone, but assuming it was a good quality mic and didn't have a lot of self noise, like a short SM58, then we should just follow our gain structure path and check the next device in line, the USB audio interface, which is of course also our mic preamp. Apply gain there using the input gain knob then move on to the outputs and finally to the final destination, which in this case is my Sony a7 IV mirrorless camera. And I wanted to try to figure out why this person was getting hiss or noise in their audio because this audio that I'm recording directly into my camera sounds very nice and clean to me. And I would definitely use this method if I needed to. 
And again, although a bit unorthodox, this is actually a pretty good way to get an XLR microphone into your camera if number one, your camera again doesn't have XLR inputs and you don't own one of the expensive XLR modules for your camera like the Sony K3M or the Panasonic DMW XLR1. And because number two, another good reason is that if you need to at the same time to record a backup of your audio on your computer, using audio software like Adobe Audition, Logic, or any other audio editor. And I figure a lot of people may actually already own a USB audio interface, so this was a good example because this is the first piece of equipment a lot of people will buy to record audio into their computer. And this is a very common one, the Scarlett 2i2. And of course, if maybe you've just bought a camera as well, but you don't want to spend more money on those XLR interfaces for your camera or an external dedicated audio recorder. So as I switch back and forth between letting you hear the audio that was going directly into my computer via USB with the Scarlett 2i2 and the audio coming from the Sony a7 IV using the same signal chain again at the same time, same preamp, same audio technically. I think the audio from the USB recording sounds better. I think it sounds more full and it definitely has less noise and I know exactly why the on-camera recording has more noise. I'll get to that in just a second. But if I'm not comparing the audio files, if I'm only listening to the Sony a7 IV and that's all I'm going to hear for the entirety of the video, then nothing is inherently wrong with the audio on the camera. But if you want the cleanest and fullest sounding audio signal, you may want to use the USB recorded audio and sync in post. So again, I'll recap the setup. I've got my Scarlett 2i2 plugged directly into my MacBook Pro laptop, and therefore the interface gets power from my laptop and allows us to then use its inputs to gain up an XLR microphone with the gain on the USB audio interface. And of course, to use those analog outputs, either like I'm doing now, or we could even send audio to somewhere else so we could use those quarter inch outputs on this interface to even send to powered speakers or studio monitors if we wanted. I could take this focus ride and plug it directly from the quarter inch outputs to any of these speakers that you see and just use this as my main volume control. But again, we're using the outputs to feed my Sony camera. And we're doing that with a simple Y cable. We've got a quarter inch TS cable that takes the left output of the Scarlett, sends it to the tip of the 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, and then the TS cable for the right output of the Scarlett sends over to the ring of the 3.5 millimeter TRS cable. And this cable is what allows us to get left and right on two cables and to left and right on a single cable over at our camera. And of course, we can also see my level coming from the Scarlett 2i2 over here in Adobe Audition. And I can monitor either one of the inputs in real time in my headphones from the 2i2's headphone output by clicking the direct monitor button, which we have activated right now. And this button immediately sends audio from the inputs to the headphone jack of the 2i2 and therefore to my headphones as well so I can hear myself and turning on the direct monitor feature also sends the incoming audio to the main analog outputs of the 2i2 at the same time. So be careful if you do have speakers plugged into the outputs because it will send your microphone that's coming in to the speakers immediately if you have the direct monitor feature turned on. And of course, if the speaker is close enough to your mic, you could get some immediate and loud feedback. So be careful and remember your signal flow, which along with gain structure, signal flow and gain structure are the two most important audio skills you really need to master. But because I do not have speakers plugged into the outputs of the 2i2, I can engage that direct monitor feature and get audio routed to where I need it to go. And it's that direct monitor feature that is required in this case to allow us to send audio from here to the camera. This direct monitor feature, and you can see right there, it's turned on. This is how I'm getting audio to the Sony a7 IV through the Scarlett. And generally, I want to be in this single circle mode. The, the Scarlett 2i2 has a mono and a stereo mode for the direct output, and I'm in the mono mode, which is signified by this single circle right there. That sends both inputs one and two directly to both outputs uh, left and right on the headphones and the analog outputs on the back. If we swap it over to uh, the dual circle mode, you'll immediately hear my audio has now gone only to the left side. So again, better heard in headphones because that is a true stereo mode by selecting the dual circle mode. It will send input one to the left only and it will send input two to the right only. And if we turn it off, 
then none of my audio uh, is going to the camera at all. You're actually hearing the audio right now from my Rode Video Mic NTG because there's no audio flowing over to the Sony a7 IV and we can look at the menu uh, on the screen of my Sony a7 IV recording here. You can see right, <laughs> right over here, there's no audio to those audio meters. But if I go back and I engage that direct monitor feature, watch the audio meters right there and it will turn on. So when I engage that, the audio then flows out of both outputs of the 2i2 over to both the left and right inputs of the Sony a7 IV. Again, if we pop it over again to the stereo mode, you'll see the meters change on the Sony only to the left. And again, you're only gonna hear me on the left. And again, I turn it off. So we'll put that back in mono mode. So that is just specific features of the Scarlett 2i2. Different audio interfaces will react differently based on their buttons. For instance, the Behringer UM2, which I have one right here, its direct monitor feature is mono only. It's once you engage it, it will send either the inputs to both the outputs and the headphone knob. So there is no mono stereo mode on the UM2. It just happens to be a feature on the 2i2. So always do test recordings, make sure you're getting audio to your destinations as you expect it and want it to get there. Also remember that on most USB audio interfaces, just like the 2i2, those analog outputs on the back usually follow some sort of monitor control knob or output knob on the front of the device. And that is the case with the 2i2 and I'm having to use that monitor output knob to feed over to the Sony a7 IV. So we have the direct monitor feature turned on, but you can see if I turn this main output knob down, this monitor knob, the level you're hearing is going down and the meters on my Sony a7 IV correspond to this output because this knob controls the output of the analog outputs here on the back, controls the volume. And same is true for the Behringer UM2. This main output knob will control, uh, on this one, it'll actually control the RCA outputs at the same time as the headphone output. So this one's a little different. The Scarlett 2i2 has a separate headphone output knob, which can help you in certain situations. So just know the characteristics and limitations of your gear. So as I said, with the Scarlett hooked up to my computer via USB, I can obviously select the inputs here in Adobe Audition. I've got input one selected there, and that's how we are recording there in Adobe Audition. And we can see the level here in Adobe Audition. We can see my meters going in that level into Adobe Audition or any software is based directly on the preamp gain of almost any USB audio interface. It is not affected by the master output knobs because again those are for the analog outputs and we can verify that as i talk and i'll let you hear the audio recorded into audition at the same time i will turn down this monitor output knob and you'll see the uh, meters on my sony a7 IV go down because we verify that this knob controls the analog outputs but you're still hearing good audio because you're hearing the adobe audition recording i've got the monitor knob all the way down, but yet we're still getting audio into Audition because it is based directly on the preamp gain of each of the inputs, not the output knob. And that's exactly why we need to verify and always apply really nice, strong, proper input gain for our audio inputs into any USB audio interface or any preamp. Analog, digital, doesn't matter. Preamp is your first line of defense uh, against noise and just great sounding audio. So. Let me do this from scratch real quick. We'll turn down the uh, preamp gain there on the Scarlett and I'll turn down the monitor output knob on the 2i2 so I know that when I start gaining up, I'm not feeding anything over to the Sony camera just yet. Uh, you're gonna hear my Rode Video Mic NTG right now. So I'll actually just start fresh. I'll gain up here on the Scarlett. Check, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. We wanna verify with uh, any microphone, especially on the Scarlett, we're gonna watch our visual meters here on the Scarlett 2i2, and we want that meter to light up green anytime we're talking. It's verifying that our signal is there. And we want it to occasionally hit orange if we get too loud, but making sure we never hit red. Check, two, two. There, a little bit of clip. And you can see a clip there in Adobe Audition as well. So we'll clear that clip out. And just like in my other video where I talked about your two most important goals in audio, we wanna have strong input gain without clipping and we want to avoid noise. The preamp is the best way to avoid both of those things. Leave enough headroom in your preamp so you don't clip. Gain it as high as you can to get over your noise floor of all of your equipment. 
So this is a good gain level based on the visual meter here on the Scarlett 2i2 paired with an SM58. And nothing really different here. This is just how most USB audio interfaces work. Plug in, gain up, don't clip, watch your input meters on your USB audio interface, and then verify that input gain from the preamp in your computer and monitor that with headphones. But as always, start at the beginning of your audio signal chain. We've got an XLR microphone. There are no buttons or switches on this microphone to change any settings. So now we move on to the next device in the line, the preamp. So we then increase the preamp gain and then get that up as high as possible, again, without clipping. Then we move on to the outputs. So now that we've verified that we've got good input gain, we can then turn up our output monitor knob and we can watch our Sony camera right here. The meter's right there. As I turn this up, we can see here that I'm now feeding audio out of the outputs over to the Sony a7IV's camera input. And this is what we've been doing for most of the video. Just thought I'd recap that process real quick. And real quick, it's always best to start with your headphones out of the first device so that I can actually hear myself here directly through the USB audio interface. Once we've verified visually that we have good input gain and audibly that it sounds good, we then need to move our headphones over to our recording device, in this case, our Sony a7 IV again, because I need to monitor, you need to monitor the audio after the destination, the destination being that camera, because we need to verify, just because the audio sounds good here, we need to verify that it still sounds good at the device. So I'll do that now. All right, so I've now plugged in my headphones to the Sony camera so I can hear my audio flowing through all of my devices. Still sounds pretty good. So we've talked about gain structure a little bit, but we haven't included gain structure of the camera, and that's very, very important. So how did I get really bad audio in those couple of examples earlier in the video, but this sounds pretty good? Because we have to take the camera and its audio settings into consideration as part of our gain structure system. So no matter which camera it is, but specifically ones with 3.5 millimeter inputs, generally we wanna keep our audio inputs on these styles of cameras as low as possible. Why? because these little 3.5 millimeter preamps can get noisy very quickly if you start increasing the gain on the camera's audio level settings and its inputs. Also remember that if you don't have anything plugged into the camera's 3.5 millimeter input, then the audio input level will gain up the microphone that's actually on the camera because there are stereo microphones on just about every camera like this. And the audio from those microphones are what will get recorded, of course, if we don't have anything plugged into the camera. But once we plug anything into the 3.5 millimeter input, the onboard mic turns off and the audio input level now listens to and records the audio from the plug that we plugged in. Again, just like we're doing here. So assuming we want to keep our camera's audio input as low as possible, on my GH5, I usually try to keep that all the way down at negative 12. That's the lowest it will go. And then I feed my audio from whatever microphone I'm using in as much as possible to where I'm hitting about negative 12 on the audio meters on my Panasonic GH5. However, Sony cameras operate a bit differently where if you turn the audio level down to zero, the mic preamp completely turns off and you won't record any audio. So you might think that I just turn up my audio level to a level of one on my Sony camera as that's the lowest setting that will allow audio to be recorded. But I always make sure to set the audio level to at least three on my Sony cameras because the Sonys seem to have a weird audio limiter that can actually make your audio sound distorted and clipped if you're on audio settings of one or two, even though it doesn't show that you've clipped on your meters on the camera. I learned about this Sony quirk from TLDR Filmmaker's video. I'll link to that video below. I recommend you watch it, but he has some very good tests that let you hear this somewhat artificial distortion coming from the camera. So with my Sony camera here, I generally don't go lower than three if possible. I'll set that to three to start. That's what I consider the lowest good level on my Sony a7 IV or my Sony a7 III. And you can see here that in the entire video, except for those bad audio examples, I've been on audio level of three right there on my Sony camera. And then I've just used that monitor knob on the Scarlett 2i2 to feed more or less audio into the Sony camera to get the levels to where I need them to be. So if I switch back and forth again between the Sony a7IV's audio and the USB audio, you should be able to hear more noise coming from the Sony a7IV's audio. Why is that? Why would we have more noise on the Sony a7IV's audio recording 
versus the USB recording. We're using the same microphone, same preamp. Again, because we are using the 3.5 millimeter input on the Sony camera still, we're still using that preamp. We've just turned the audio settings down to use as little of that preamp as cleanly as possible. So we're not really bypassing the preamp and that's generally where your noise is gonna come from in this example. If you do have one of the XLR modules, those typically plug into the hot shoe of your camera and completely bypass the 3.5 millimeter mic preamp because they're going digitally through the hot shoe. That's how it's making the power, data, and audio connection. All right, so how did we get this clean signal when we can obviously still have that dirty signal, that dirty audio, that hissy, noisy audio like we had in the beginning, like this? Now that noise is back, and again, same microphone, same USB audio interface. The main difference here is the settings on the camera, specifically, obviously, the audio settings on the camera. All of this noise and hiss and slight ground hum that you hear are because I really didn't take the camera into consideration when I was gain structuring this system. And as I talked about in one of my other videos, you have to take all the components in your audio system into account when gain structuring. You always want to start at the beginning, and we've done that. We've gain structured our preamp and then sent audio over to our camera. But in this case, because our cameras like these, these little 3.5 millimeter inputs, because those mic preamps on those inputs are noisy, we're going to get this if we start increasing the gain on these cameras too much. And that's what I've done. If I pop over and show you the menu here on the Sony a7 IV, you can see my audio settings now are at 17, whereas previously they were at three. So I increased the input gain on the Sony a7 IV, and as you can see here on the Scarlett, I've actually turned down the monitor level. So I've turned up the a7IV's input, but I've had to turn down the output on the Scarlett, and I can reverse this real quick and get back to 543. I was doing that at the same time. I was at the same time reducing the input on the uh, camera with my left hand and I was increasing the output of the Scarlett at the same time so that you, your audio level that you're hearing now from my voice didn't change too much. So now we're back to that nice clean sounding audio. So how do we keep this from happening? Obviously you need to always take your camera into account in this situation and you want to set it to its lowest cleanest level. Again, Panasonic GH5, I always set it to negative 12 on the input gain. And on my Sony a7 IV and Sony a7 III, I set it to three minimum because of that arbitrary audio limiter that you can get when you're on audio settings of one or two. So why would we ever be potentially gained up on the camera and not notice? I'll give you a quick example, and this has happened to me before, and I'm gonna switch back over to the Rode VideoMic NTG because I'm going to actually unplug the audio from the a7 IV right now. When you do that, because I don't have this plugged into the preamp, then the a7 IV gets its audio from the microphone on the camera. And right now you're hearing the Rode video mic NTG, but if I were going to use this camera out and about, maybe I just needed to record some audio and didn't have a microphone with me. Well, in that scenario, let's say we we're using it for this, um, the audio levels are not very uh, great right here. We can see on the meters, it's the microphone's working, but if the audio levels are so low. So without anything plugged in, then the audio levels uh, take and gain up the onboard microphone. So let's say I was going to use the onboard microphone and let's say I'm going to be set right there at 17. We can see uh, my input meters right there on the Sony a7 IV. Maybe this were a good level when I was using the onboard microphone. But then let's say that we wanted to take our audio from somewhere else and plug it in and then use external audio fit in like we've been doing. Okay, well, I'll plug that in. All right, so I've plugged that in, but you're still hearing the Rode video mic in DG because I haven't changed anything on the Scarlett, it's still feeding out kind of this level we had earlier. But you can see here on the Sony a7IV's meters that uh, I'm clipping out because I'm feeding out a nice hot signal from my Scarlett 2i2. But if we look at the audio preamp settings on the Sony, they're still at 17. So I set them at 17 when I was using the internal mic because again, that may have been a good level for the internal mic, but just because you plug something in doesn't mean the audio levels save different settings. On the Sony cameras at least, it saved that setting of 17 right there. So the preamp is still at 17 and that's why I'm clipping out. So maybe you would use the internal microphone, you're at level 17, you wanted to plug in some external audio so you plugged it in but you didn't check the audio level settings on your camera. And here's where a lot of people would reach for the preamp gain. This is a really bad habit that I see 
daily, daily out in the workforce. So yes, if we reduce the preamp gain, yes, of course, we can see right here on the Sony that the level does get reduced because the output monitor knob and the outputs of the 2i2 in any device are taking its level from the preamp. So we've reduced the level of the preamp. It sends less level to the monitor knob, less level out of the camera, and now we're at good audio levels. However, despite the fact that we've reduced the levels, we still have all the noise because our Sony a7 IV is still set at a preamp level of 17. And again, don't reach for a gain knob to turn down volume coming out of your device. Okay, so let's let's uh, turn our gain back up here, and we are going to clip out our audio again on our Sony camera, but we need to leave the gain where the gain needs to be for the microphone. Don't reduce the input gain to compensate for other devices. This is still a really good gain level for this microphone. So, okay, we don't want to touch the gain. Well, we can turn down the monitor knob here, and yes, of course, that will also reduce the level out of the Scarlett over to the camera, and now we're at a good level on the camera but we're still getting noisy audio. So it's not the device. Again, it's that 17 level, and it's not necessarily 17 or any other particular number on this or any camera. It's the fact that since we are using more input gain on the camera from that particularly noisy preamp, that we can only send so much out of our device upstream. So the solution, again, keep your inputs on your cameras as low as possible and send more audio to it from your device. Never sacrifice proper input gain on your microphone preamps for output levels at another device down the line. Always gain up your microphones and pretty much leave them as long as you're not clipping. Nice and strong levels, get this over our noise floor, sends a cleaner signal out of our device over to the next device. So perfect example of always remembering to take all of the components in your audio system into account when gain structuring. We have to gain structure the entire system. We also still do not sacrifice proper good input gain for another device down the line. Just don't do that. Bad audio habits. We need to keep the preamp gain there. Gain it up, send it out. In this case, with these specific style cameras, setting them to as low as cleanly possible then send audio out of our device over to them. And then you can have this nice, clean sounding audio if you want on your Sony or any other brand mirrorless camera with these 3.5 millimeter inputs. I still think the USB recording that we're getting on Audition sounds better and that's what you're hearing right now. But again, if you don't have time to uh, sync up and post or you just don't want to, this is a completely viable option. Use the equipment you have. Again, maybe get a backup recording in some audio software. You could use Audacity, it's free. You could use OBS, which I'm using to record the screen here. That's free as well. Any of those programs are somewhat widely available for free or for money if you wanna pay money, but use the free ones if you can. So I really hope this has helped. I hope it's shown you many different ways to route your audio, how you really should be following proper gain structure every time you're setting up a microphone, a preamp and routing that anywhere. I can't stress enough, stop sacrificing proper input gain for output volume. Follow proper gain structure methodology, start from the beginning, work your way through to the end. And uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna try to make a shorter version of this video, but I really hope some of this information or a lot of this information has been very helpful. Please leave me a comment down below if any of it has or if you have any questions because this video came up because of a question I got on another video. Maybe your question could lead to me doing a video to answer or help you doing something with audio or video in this case. I mean, hey, I'm recording in like seven places. Camera one, camera two, camera three, ca camera four. I'm recording on screen. That's five. Camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. I'm recording my screen. I'm recording audio and audition. Uh, that's at least six destinations that I'm recording to. And it's fun. I like it. So. All right. I've talked enough. See you later.